it's an interesting story. It's <laughs> Barbara Eden uh, is married to Peter Bonners, and Peter Bonners. Take that. Peter Bonners has decided he's going to have a small affair with the lady at the office. Barbara catches him. She then, later in the movie, enlists Hal Linden, this handsome gentleman, to make Peter je uh, jealous so she can, he, she can use him to break up the divorce. So here's a couple of clips from the movie. Uh, I hope it'll give you a little idea. Jerry Paris directed this, incidentally. He did all the happy days. He was an actor. He does some of the wildest, craziest things. Uh, there are some other scenes in this movie that are just absolutely hilarious. Uh, but you can run a clip now from uh, How to Break Up a Happy Divorce, please. I saw you talking to Merle and Olson earlier. Do you uh, know him? Yes. Yeah, we, we were in the paratroops together. Oh, Tony knows all the players. I met Fran Tarrington once in New York City. <laughs> he was staying in my apartment. Oh, guy. Well, we'll be seeing you around, I'm sure. Oh, I'm counting on it. What do we do to make your husband jealous tomorrow? How'd you know? Well, we keep running into him. I mean, it's not that small a world. I'm sorry. Hmm. Naughty, naughty. I mean, at least I was honest with you. I went out with you to make a sale. But, uh, you're using me to needle your husband? Oh, no, no, no. That's not the reason. Oh, don't you see? I've been using you to try to get my husband back. By making him jealous? That's it. Without you, I can't do it. So I guess that's the end of the ball game. Wait, 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 wait. Time, time, time. Uh, I don't know why not. Sounds like a lot of fun, why not? Honest? Sure, you're a worthy cause. Of course, I don't know what you want with a guy who was idiot enough to leave you in the first oh, place. But thank easy, easy, you. take it easy, don't get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how'd you find this place anyway? <laughs> I hate crowded restaurants. When my agent sent me the script to How to Break Up a Happy Divorce, I read the script. And I called him back, and the agency went crazy. I was relatively new in uh, California. I came to do Barney Miller, which was only a couple of years before that. And I didn't know the ins and outs of Hollywood casting or how things were done. But I, was, I don't know if you remember this. When I was sent the script, I was sent the script to play the husband, to play the Peter Bonner's part. And I read the script. I said, I don't know, this character looks like more fun. I'm... So I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll do the thing if I can play that character. Agency went crazy because 
Peter Bonner's had, or the, that part was the lead, and mine was just a character part. The price went <laughs> <laughs> And so they said, you sure you don't? I said, it's more fun, let's do that part. Same thing the character said, why not? It was a lot of fun. It was terrific, it was a lot of fun. And by the way, Barbara looks terrific today. I just worked with her. She still looks great. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yes, she you know, does. What, what a lot of people may not know about you is the number of shows you've done, Broadway shows. Broadway shows. Yeah. Big thing, like uh, Tuesdays with Maury, I'm Not Rappaport, The Sisters Rosenzweig, to name just a few. Cabaret. You have a preference? I'm, uh -huh. Film, sh stage, retirement. You know, that is the, yeah. interestingly <laughs> enough, that is the, probably the most frequent question an actor is asked, am I correct? They always ask you, like you have to make a decision today, otherwise, you know. And I used to say, all of the above. Not very, but I finally figured out if you really want to know what I prefer, it's rehearsal. <laughs> it's the, the time you spend working on the part which is probably the most creative part of what you do uh, before you execute it. Uh, but uh, I was only a partialist. Over 20, over 20 Broadway and off-Broadway productions. And ran off 10 pages on a printer with yeah. a long list. <laughs> a long list. You know, um, one thing a lot of people don't know about Hal is that he's a fantastic clarinetist. And uh, Ava and I did a party at, for the Joffrey Ballet, and we had a jam session with Lalo Schifrin on the piano, right. Hal on the, on the clarinet, and a friend of ours, Fernando Gelbart, on the flute. And we brought in three pieces from the Johnny Carson band. And these guys just, I mean, they blasted out a storm. We had the best Joffrey Ballet, ballet dinner, I think, that they had in the history of the, uh, there, of the there theater. Actually, Lalo called me after that, and we did a, a jazz record. Did you? It's extant somewhere. And we I've, didn't get a I've royalty. I've never heard of it, but it's <laughs> royalties. I think 11 people bought it. <laughs> yeah. Lalo's relatives, probably. I don't know. Still doing nightclub acts? Still do it. Well, it's, there are no nightclubs anymore. <laughs> That's true. Uh, no, I still do. Uh, I call it in concert, but it's not really a concert. It's more like a little show, a uh, one-man show that I do. I've uh, been doing it since... Well, it's now 40 some odd years, I guess. Thanks a lot, Hal. Still, thank you. Good to see you. Let's go to Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man's become a big hit. Oh, yes. But it. you were the first to do it. Well, yes, it was a very interesting situation. You know, a, being, a, being a sales guy, you know, you always believe you're creative and you're gonna do something. I worked with a guy, Danny Goodman, at Screen Gems, and uh, I was in the CBS Studio Center at the time. It was about 75, 76, something like that. And I got a call from Danny Goodman. Danny had left uh, Columbia also, had worked with uh, uh, the Brute Fragrance people, and they made a big good picture called Touch of Class with George, Linda Jackson and George Siegel. And Danny was a kind of a confidential, no-push type salesman, so he's on the phone. He's whispering, I can't, I can't hear you, Dan, what, what's up? He says, well, I'd like to come and see you. I have something really special. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, where are you? Because he lived in New York. He said, I'm, I'm right, I'm there, Bob, I'll be there in 20 minutes. So he comes over, he looks around, he closes the door. Everybody in the office is crazy. What's going on? And Chuck, with the door closed. He never closes his door. So Dan says, I'll tell you what I did. What? I went to see Marvel. I convinced them to let me do a live action Spider-Man television series. Had Alvin Boards write a script and now I've got a pilot order and I don't know what to do because I never produced anything in my life. He said, I went to Columbia, they want the standard studio deal, but I want to make a special deal, joint venture, 50-50. I said, no, 60-40, 60 for me. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to do the financing. I'm gonna have to put all my expertise on the line and, uh, you know, you're going to be running in and out, uh, having dinner with the cast and uh, doing nothing else. <laughs> so um, uh, we shot the pilot. It was a 90 minutes, only 74 minutes long for a 90-minute slot. 
And in those days, all the opticals were done in the laboratory, uh, and they were expensive, and they were a lot of mistakes made. So we came up with an idea of shooting them on videotape and doing a special effect like they did here, and transferring it back to film. So where did we go for distribution? We went back to Columbia. I mean, Pat Williamson ran everything, domestic, international, theatrical. He said, I'll be out next week. I'll take a look. So he said, Loving this thing, man. I mean, he is really loving this movie. I'll call you back tomorrow, he says. What's up? He says, well, I'll tell you. Could you make this thing about 92 minutes? I said, well, maybe I can. I said, I'll call my son Tom. He's a film editor and see if we can stretch it, you know? Uh, I said, what do you have in mind? He said, I think we can release this as a feature in form. So called Tom. Tom, I said, look, do anything yet. Make run by, stretch the end credits, <laughs> whatever you have to do, scrape everything off the cutting room floor. We need 92 minutes. Two days later, he says, I think we can do it, Dad. I called Williamson. He says, I'm still in town. I'll look at it. Bingo. He gives us an advance against a theatrical film. We did $10 million on this little million dollar uh, 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 television pilot. Now, today, with the Euro, with uh, the emerging countries, with Eastern Europe, with the Asian countries, there would have been 70 million, you know? But I was living at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, uh, I'm going to show you a clip here uh, of uh, Fred Waugh, our stunt double, who you're going to meet, climbing the Empire State Building. Now, this is all done, legit, no, no gimmicks, nothing else. It's Freddy climbing the ropes up the Empire State Building, across the power pit with a helmet camera. You want to run the Spider-Man clip, please? Every time we got an order, I asked for a two-parter so we could have another, another movie. We did that two or three more times. Fred Waugh? Fred. Fred's our stunt double. That's the guy you saw walking around up there on the power pit. Tell them a little bit about how you rigged that, Fred, so they know how you climb it. Maybe somebody else want to do that someday. Why do you do that? Put your hand out like this. Very steady. <laughs> uh, we had three days to solve how we were going to climb, <coughs> climb on uh, Spider-Man, and uh, I came up with the idea of having a travel cable. In other words, if somebody is pulling you up the side of the building, <coughs> there's nothing to keep you from swinging out. So we had to come up with a, a, what we call a travel cable. 
So we started out with one eighth inch cable over to studios. We rigged a travel cable. I went down to the hardware and bought a little pulley, <coughs> uh, awning pulley, and hooked into my harness and so forth. And I'd hook that into the travel cable so it would keep me sucked into the building. And then I had seven guys up on top pulling me. And I would talk to them. I had radio mic on and I was able to talk to them. Well, during the test, we had pulled the travel cable so tight that when I got halfway up and I'm pushing on it <coughs> to, as I'm going, you no, know, I was upside down coming down. And as I pushed on it, the travel cable broke. And I swung away from the cable from the, uh, from the building. And uh, then <coughs> We decided that uh, one eighth inch cable wasn't going to do it, so, <laughs> so we went to three sixteenths, and I like that. <clears throat> excuse me, because three sixteenths gave me a margin of error. One eighth inch, one eighth inch cable didn't give me that much margin. It's only two hundred and twenty pounds snapping strength, and you'd stop and think about getting stuck somewhere and somebody's pulling. Is you could get yourself in trouble. So we moved to three sixteenths, and that was the uh, <clears throat> that made me feel good. Is that about the most difficult stunt you've ever done? No, the whole, the whole uh, series was uh, dynamic for me. I mean, it gave me a chance to show my wares, so to speak. Uh, uh, I'm a professional acrobat. I grew up in the circus, and, uh, and I applied a lot of that in the Spider-Man. It, uh, it, it was a show that uh, it's probably the best show I've ever done in my life. I mean, I had more enjoyment on that show than any other thing. I've been 50 years banging my head into the wall as a stuntman. But I enjoyed that show more than anything. The only bad thing about it, it never went for the next season. You know what his email address is? Spider putts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we solved a lot of problems. We did a lot of reverse <coughs> photography. Uh, we played with that and shooting the web and so forth. Uh, I, <coughs> uh, I had no, I only had one close call the whole time I was on it. It was on a, underneath a helicopter. We were shooting downtown in LA, and Spider Man's hanging under the helicopter. Of course, I had a cable from the helicopter down to my harness, and we fly all around the city. And <coughs> now this, the helicopter's trying to kill me, so it's flying towards the building. It's going to smash me into the side of the building. So we did all those takes going into the side of the building, and then uh, we cut. And then up on top, <coughs> I <coughs> what I did, and I got. <coughs> let me preface this: three days before I did this, I ran a stick through my head, my hand <coughs> on my kid's motorcycle. I fell off, and <coughs> and a piece of wood went through my hand. So I only had one hand; it was my right hand. And on the end of the cable, there's what we call a thimble. So the cable goes down and wraps around the thimble. So you, if you put your hand on the cable and slide down, then it's, you, you've got something to anchor it. Well, the shot was the helicopter's going to pick me up on this side of the building, three or four feet, fly forward, and then I'm going to drop, let go, drop, roll, and disarm this atomic bomb that's going to blow up the city. <laughs> so we did it once, and it was perfect. But the director wanted to do another one. So the next one, the next one, I had a helicopter pilot on the other side of the, the building. He was giving the signals to the helicopter pilot, up, 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 steady, okay, everything's good. All of a sudden, he lifts me up, and I'm about 15 feet in the air. Now he's telling the chopper to lower down. As he's lowering down, he's moving forward at the same time, and I'm turning around with my back coming towards the uh, camera. And I know if I let go, it's, you can imagine what's going to happen. I'm going to snap my head and, you know, and uh, whatever. So anything, everything happened just like that. The next thing I know, I'm out over the city, hanging on by one hand. This hand is no good at all. And he doesn't know I'm underneath the helicopter. He thinks they dropped off. Then, <laughs> would you do it again? Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> I'd do it differently. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Go around it too fairly hard.